Hey everyone, I've just received my new and revised FLCOS PCB. I fixed some of the internal traces and removed unnecessary stuff. It's pretty much still the same board, but I'm slowly getting to the fully custom one. Today I will show you how I assemble those things myself. Most of the stuff right now has to be transferred from the original board, but I'm slowly working on it. So far I'm just happy that it's working. The boards for some reason now come in this white paper. No idea why, but two layer boards still come shrink wrapped. As you can see, I've slightly improved the seal screen. You can now see better where to solder the components. You can see here the differences between the older version. The main difference is that the cable connector is now gone. I've replaced it with simple solder points. I've also added the microcontroller solder mask, which will help to place the chip on board. For the new board, I've also removed some minor components, which for some reason had broken traces on the original. I always start the soldering process with absolutely drowning my board with flux. This will help me put the solder in correct spots and avoid any short circuits. It can be cleaned off afterwards. Here you can see the board with solder added on top. Some bigger parts have too much solder, but it can be sucked off. Now that I have all the solder in place, I can begin transferring the components. Of course I've got most of the components mapped out, so I could make almost full board from grounds up. I will solder my components using super cheap hot air station, hot plate is not required. It's fairly easy process, since components will pop into place by themselves when using flux. I will give you an example using this fairly big coil. You can see that it's a bit crooked, I've also dumped huge amounts of flux on it, but it's almost invisible. I'll just heat it up and it will pop into place by itself. You can see that it slowly slides towards the center. I've transferred the rest of the components pretty much the same way. I don't want to bore you, so I won't show the full process. Also, I broke my tripod and I need my second hand to hold the tweezers. So my filmmaking capabilities are a bit limited. After soldering for a while, board gets super gross due to huge amounts of flux. This means it's time for IPA buff. I basically pour the IPA into my blue bin and dump the board inside. I will leave it for a while so that the IPA will sink into the flux. After it sinked for a while, I took it out and cleaned it with my toothbrush. It looks million times better now. Now that it's all cleaned up, I can solder all of the remaining parts. This time I will be soldering the bottom half of the PCB. It's a bit tricky since it has the big chip on it. You can easily solder the chip by adjusting the position first and then heating it up. It's best to start with the chip so you'd avoid knocking any small parts. As you can see, I've already finished with all of them, so I can finally solder the ribbon connector. Ribbon connector is soldered in the end since it's very easy to melt it with hot air. This is why I will be soldering it with regular soldering iron. I mean right after I fix this chip which randomly unsoldered itself. With chips fixed, I can safely solder the connector. I bought about 10 of them in case I break any, but at this point I solder each one perfectly. I'll start soldering by adding solder to this point right here. It will be used to hold the connector in place while I solder all the pins. It's very important to get the position right. It's by far the easiest way to solder this type of connector. After you solder that one pin, connector will hold to the board super well. Now double check the pin alignment and solder the second pin right here. 
With the both pins soldered, it will be pretty much impossible to get it wrong. Now drown that thing in flux, I mean absolutely drench it. It will just make life easier. Now what you want to do is get a solder blob on your soldering iron and drag it across all of the pins. With enough flux and just right amount of luck, you'll get the pin soldered on the first try. You can double check your soldering using magnifier glass. And now the board is pretty much ready to use. It looks nice and clean. I've connected it to my Pi to show you guys that it really works. As always it's super hard to show it since it's super tiny. I always show it on one take so you know for sure that it's my board. The random color flickering is caused by my camera refresh rate, it's not visible with my eyes. Here you can see my newest version which I've just assembled during filming. Part list and Gerber files will be available shortly on my Patreon so make sure you grab them. Anyway that's all for today, thanks for watching and see you soon.